Hi guys, it's me Chrissy. Thank you and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing uh, an A4 size canvas. I'm just toning it, well, blacking it out, should I say, with some black paint, acrylic paint. I want it quite dark for the base of this uh, project I'm doing today. Now I'm adding some blues, pinks, purples, a bit of turquoise and some white. I'm just putting it on quite thick and I'm just using an old credit card just to smooth some of it out but I want it quite thick and impasto. I haven't added any impasto, it's just straight paint. Then I cover it with some cling wrap, smudge it around a bit which is always a good thing to do, fun. And I just want to create some texture into the background which I'm trying to create now as you're watching. So just move it around till you're happy how you want it to look. I've just popped some air holes there just to let it breathe. Now here I'm pulling it off. I don't want it completely dry. This is where you want to get it off your canvas before it actually dries properly. And then it will give you that lovely texture uh, look. Now I've dried it off properly and transferred my animal on, which is today's a giraffe. <laughs> Now I don't want him that blue obviously so I'm going to block him in with some uh, yellow ochre and I've just added a bit of quinacridone gold and I think I'm using a half inch angle brush, yes I am. Now it's always good fun to do these projects on a textured surface, I mean you could do it with impasto paint that's perfectly fine as well but I'm just showing you today you can do it without um, adding any mediums and that was just normal paint it wasn't any thick paint or anything as long as you put plenty on you can get texture obviously using the cling wrap also so happy days there but it's nice to do these projects because sometimes you want to do something a bit different and uh, add a bit of texture to your painting because it's something nice to touch afterwards and feel it as well as look at it as well you know what I mean it's just something different and nice to look at now I'm just adding some brown here I think I've got a bit of brown which is uh, burnt umber and I've added just a bit of quinacridone gold in just to get his uh, little spots patches in and as you see further up in the video I do build it up it is in layers I'm working in acrylics like I said and you must let every layer dry and then keep building up to get the end result. So every layer you see here, I've let everything dry and then carried on. I'm just using a dark blue just to get the outer lining of his eye. And as the video gets further on, you'll see how I just build up the eye. And that's the only the main detail I actually put in to this painting. The rest of it is very loose. I keep nice loose brush strokes. As you see, I'm using a nice soft filbert brush here. Now that helps a soft filbert brush because it stops you creating harsh edges, which I didn't want in this because I wanted it nice and loose and soft blended in. So the filbert brush gives you a nice soft blended edge rather than using a flat brush, which can leave like a harsher edge. So that's why I'm using this filbert brush today. So now I'm just going over to some thin white. Um, it's, it's tinted. I've got a little bit of blue in it. And you can see I'm just giving it a thin layer because I still want to see underneath. Because when you build up in layers, you want to see all the layers come together. You know what I mean? So it builds it up into a 3D image, which is your final painting. And it brings everything to life. You know, it's, it's really cool. So I always work thin and build up my uh, mid-tones, then obviously your highlights. But you need your dark underlayers to work forwards. So you need your, the contrast, obviously. So your work at the end uh, stands out. So don't go too light too soon. I think I always say that a lot, but it, it is a must. Because some people do try to jump in too quick, putting the highlights on, and you... The result is, at the end of the day, your painting will look flat. So just bear that in mind. I'm just putting some dark elements in there, as you see, for his nostrils and his mouth. 
Now, as you see further on, which you'll see soon in the painting, I want his cheeks to look like he's chewing and he's actually going to be chewing on the, on a branch on some leaves. So you'll see how I build that up and make that stand out. So it definitely attracts the viewer's eye. I'm just using a bit of red and a bit of black. So I've got a really dark, deep red to put these dark values in. Thin again so I can smooth it out with this little round brush. Like I said, I'm doing thin layers. I'm building some structure up to his uh, actual skin now. because He's got a few wrinkles going on. But I've put him in quite bold, as you see. Uh, but I will come back to that and glaze them back a little bit. I'm using some Naples yellow now and a tiny little bit of Quinacridone gold to give another layer over that uh, off-white that we just previously did. Obviously, I dried it off properly. And here where his mane is, I think they call it a mane, same as a horse. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm calling it a mane. I'm just using some uh, red and some burnt orange and a bit of brown just to get that rusty colour. Still with a small filbert, a soft filbert. And I'm adding that into the mane and his patches and a tiny little bit in his eye. So I just want that glow. But his eye is quite dark. It's not got much reflection on it. But like I said, as we get further on, you'll see how I build that up. I'm not going with lighter white. I've just tinted this slightly with a bit of Naples yellow. So it's just a bit brighter than the underpainting. I'm just shaping the patches on him just to get them a bit more how I wanted them before. So I just loosely put it in as we started the video. And then I build up and then start refining any shapes that I, I wasn't happy with. Now I'm here, I'm using just some um, phthalo blue. And it's very thin. And then I'm just getting his eye uh, straightened up and just flicking it out slightly on his eyelids so it's not a harsh line it's like a broken up bit of a line that phthalo blue is just got a tiny bit of titanium white in but it's very thin because i've mixed it down with some glazing medium you can also use ultramarine blue or any blue you desire I just went with phthalo blue Now I've come back to my round brush and I've just got some quinacridone gold here and just a little bit of burnt umber and, and sienna uh, to get those little patches on his uh, little antlers and on top of his face. And I think I use the same colour to put that in his eye as well, just to give that a bit of a glow. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, this was great fun to do. I haven't done a textured painting for a long while and I, I thought, right, I know what I'm going to do today. Uh, you know what I mean? Then you crack on, don't you? I really enjoyed it. And if you enjoy art, I've got a Facebook group also. You can uh, join that. The links for that will be in the description box. I also have a website which you can go and browse at if you like original artwork. There's art on there for sale and everything includes shipping and packaging. Now here I'm just doing it, uh, um, that quinacridone gold and some burnt orange and a tiny bit of sienna and red. And I'm just building up that dark section underneath his, his chin there where the wrinkles are. Then I go back to my lighter colour which is Naples yellow and some quinacridone gold. On his mane I've just got my liner brush and I'm just flicking in some dark values because they have that like spiky looking mane, a bit like a zebra, don't they? Like it's really stands up and bushy. So I want to get that element in to make it look like it's uh, standing up. So I'm just putting some dark bits in. And this is what I'm talking about, putting the harsh lines in, which I'm doing now. As you'll see further on in the video, I do glaze them back, but they need to be harsh at the moment. So I can establish if they're in the right place or not. So I can see where to work around them, yeah. So 
still using his liner brush because I'm just getting a bit of detail in around his mouth. Well, not as much detail. It's more like you like some darks, really. It's just easy with a small brush. And I think the blue and the and the pink background looks really cool. I think it makes him really stand out when he's finished. But you could choose any background, I suppose. It's just one that comes to my mind. I thought it looked nice. Same again with that phthalo blue. Some I've done it a bit stronger, some I've really glazed it out so it's thin. So I'm just looking at me referencing where the dark values are. Bit of shadow there behind his ear. Because the, the spots on the face are quite close together. So I just thought of going with my smaller brush just to make it a bit more easy. Giving it another glaze on that eye and just making sure I've got the shape correct. Now I'm going in with some brighter white. It's not a total bright white. I think I have some Naples yellow in that as well. So it's an off white. And I'm going to use this to scoot over with a thin glaze just to, just to bring everything together so everything's not so bold and sharp. Just soften things up a bit. Same round there on his cheeks. Now I'll do them a bit brighter as well because I do want to make them look like he's chewing. So they're like bulging out like he's chewing something. Which he is. <laughs> on a big tree. And can you see here now where I'm just slightly glazing over them harsh lines that we've put in for these wrinkles. And I'm going more yellow as we go further down because it's more in shadow. So it's more of a cadmium yellow and some quinacridone gold. But still a thin layer as you can see there. You can still see the brown underneath. I glaze it down. I've used a bit of burnt orange there as well, just to get some. If you want harsh edges and you want some soft edges in your work, and this painting is definitely more soft edges than harsh because he's more of a um, loose, abstractive. Well, he's not abstract, but an abstract feel because we're putting less detail in. But also, he's an animal, so I did want the soft blendiness on him. So he looks really nice. Any questions, guys, you can always leave in the comment section. If you need to know anything, I will answer you and get back to you. And also I live stream every Thursday on this channel at 7 p.m. UK time. So if you need to know anything there, you can pop along and interact in the live feed, which is always good fun. We always have a good time in the live chats, talk about lots and lots of art related stuff and any questions at all related to art, you'll, you'll, you know, if I don't know it, which I probably will, somebody else will, but it's, it's good fun, we have a good time there. I'm going back in with that blue, now I've changed blue, I've gone to more French ultramarine blue, uh, and I'm, I added a tiny little violet into that, so it's got like a purple hue to it. And I'm soft blending in with that, also another glaze. <clears throat> and underneath I'm going more yellow. So I've, I've got cadmium yellow there and some gold, when I could on gold. And then I'm filling in his main bit. I've just gone a bit more brighter red. So I've put more burnt orange into that. So I think it looked nice with the blue background, you know, with all the blues and the purples. Another glaze on his eye. I'm just touching up the background there because sometimes, you know, it could be too dark or too light. So you decide. I'm just flicking some lighter values, some darker shades in where I think they need them. 
And I go back in with that nice purpley blue. Highlighting the reflections now in his eye. There's still an off white, it's not totally pure white. I've toned it down with blues and yellows. Because if it were totally bright white, it'd be too bright and stand out, yeah? It'd stand out too much. But if you do get it like that, it's okay, leave it, and you can always glaze it back. Now here I wanted it a bit more prominent around his cheeks. Like I said, because he's chewing, he's chewing on a branch. And he's a nice bright spot around his eye. So they've got really cute eyes, haven't they? I think they're really cute. Cute eyes and long tongues. <laughs> I'm put some little wrinkles and some little whiskers around his muzzle. I'm just painting the branch, and I've just got a dark green just to get it, draw it in. And I'm just lighting it slightly with some yellow. But it's still loose, so I don't want detail on this at all. So I want it to fit in with the rest of the painting. I'm putting some highlights around his lips. And little wrinkles and creases that they have. And these little whiskers. <laughs> but back to the eye. I wanted a bit more blue on top, so I'm, I'm doing that now. I'm checking any dark areas that need to go in as well. Still using that liner brush. I can see on the spots, I'm putting some harsh lines in, some dark values there, just to make them stand out a bit more, so they're not all one shade. I'm back in his ear with that French ultramarine blue. I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. So thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.